Welcome back to part two of Completely Naked Gaming's playthrough of Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Templars. We're going to jump right in where we left off. So, we've just followed our clown into the sewer. Let's see what happens. It was a shiny red plastic ball sat incongruously on the slippery green slimed floor. As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. It was the clown's red nose. Well, we must be on the right track then. Now, as I've said, I am trying to play through this as though it's my very first time. It's not my first time. It's probably my 50th time. Um, so I know a lot of the puzzles in this game. Uh, I'll try not to do them too quickly so that you get to see some of, the, some of the things that you would see if you was playing it yourself for the very first time. I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, like breakfast leftovers. Gross. Although I am now hungry. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. Hi there. Hold it right there. You're right. <laughs> I knew you'd come back. And now I've got you. What are you talking about? You're trespassing. Come out of there. Immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. Ha! <laughs> you won't catch me with tricks like that. Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, what were you looking for? I was looking for a clown. Huh, ridiculous. Do you really expect me to believe that? He planted a bomb in the cafe and blew it up. What? The cafe? Blown up? Mon dieu. That is awful. And you say the person responsible was dressed as a clown? That's right. He blew up the cafe, escaped into the sewer, changed his clothes, and came up here. Ah, mon dieu. And then, the man I chased, do you think that man and the clown are one and the same? Well, yes, it had crossed my mind. Ah, that still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. Haha, <laughs> most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waste pipes were such an attraction. Okay, right, so now we get to speak to this guy. Um, now, I'm going to go with the funniest bit first. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? Oh, uh, she isn't hurt, is she? No, she's fine. Oh, thank heavens. A poor girl like her isn't safe with the likes of you roaming the streets. Can't you understand? I'm not a gangster. I'm an American tourist. Hm. Ah, that's what you say. Okay, he's not going to speak to me properly, so that wasn't the funny bit. Um, let's try and trick him a bit, shall we? Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Mm -hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rousseau? What does that say? Hominoid Division? A homicide. I think the ink's smudged. Mm -hmm. Then you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know, I had a feeling there was something different about you. It is your posture, your, your poise. Oh, yes. There is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And uh, I should know. I was in the army, you know. When I was your age, I was fighting for my life in the African desert. 
How can I help you, Inspector? Let's start over from the beginning and tell it just like it was. Sorry about that there, the uh, work phone rang and I had to answer it. Now hopefully the video paused. Um, this is only my second video so I'm not sure. Anyway, let's carry on. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? <laughs> you, you, you can't suspect her, ah, surely. Just answer the question please. Yes, uh, I know her quite well, you could say. Uh, she came to work at the cafe oh, uh, six, uh, seven months ago. I look forward all week to the relief she gives me when she visits. Really? So you'd miss her if she wasn't there? Oh, mais oui! Who else would I find to cut my toenails? Why is the local waitress cutting his toenails? I find that stranger than if she was having sex with him or something. That's just bizarre. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Why yes, he was! Clutched in his arms like a baby. That belonged to his victim. Oh, what do you think was in it? Drugs? Stolen jewels? I don't know. But the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> Nothing is worth that, monsieur. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, monsieur. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. I'm going to find the guy responsible. I'll find him. Even if it means following him down every sewer in every city in Europe. Bravo! Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> he was a mean one, monsieur. He grabbed me in an arm lock. His face suddenly next to mine. His grip was like iron. But he did not know what he was up against. Oh no. He made a big mistake when he took on one of the desert hyenas. Yes, yes, I get Sorry about that. Right, okay. Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. I'd recognize that pattern anywhere. Now, about the jacket you found. Do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn, so I sent it for repair. <laughs> A pity, because otherwise it was... It had the tailor's name inside on the label. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. Was there anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not a sou. You know what I think? Do tell me. Mm -hmm. He changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as an ordinary person. Hmm. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. What was the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todrick, I think. Did you get the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74 59 You're kidding. That's his phone number? Yes, that's it. A little secret number that I learned in. I was taught the technique by a Tuareg shaman. That's incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkout. Uh, do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. Okay, sorry about the music if it's getting too loud for you and you can't hear the, uh, the voices. For some reason, there's I no have way to be going. To... Nope. Thanks to your help. The citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Vraiment? I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, Inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. I'll let you out. I hope you find your man, Inspector. So do I. Okay, right, we'll try that again, seeing as I was so rudely interrupted by George. Um, right, yeah, the 
music at times can get very, very loud, um, and it can drown out some of the some of the voice acting, which is a shame. The music itself is amazing, but the ideally would have put in some way of changing the, the volumes independently. Um, on this original version, that's not the case, so uh, I apologise. Hello? Who is this? Hi, my name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart, I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No, no, that's not possible. Oh, okay, uh, forget it. Listen, all I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Ah, oh, thank God. I thought you were the police. There are uh. innocent lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. Lives that you could save. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Verte? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Todrick. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you be, but sure I am. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if you're saying that to make me think you don't know what I mean, but... Oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Todrick. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. Did you know that one of your customers was a part-time clown? If a guy feels happy with a funny nose and custard down his pants, what's the problem? Do you know a guy called Plantar? No, I never heard of him. Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told you, I never heard of Plantar. I expect Plantar's a family man, don't you? In their little apartment, Madame Plantar is cooking the supper, listening for the familiar sound of her husband's key in the door. Junior is waiting for his daddy to come home from work. He can't wait to show him the merit marks he earned in school today. Only tonight, Monsieur Plantar won't be coming home. You forgot the puppy. Huh? The faithful puppy dog, waiting for the sound of his master's voice. Well, maybe they don't have a dog. What do you think? I don't know, Plantar. I never heard of Plantar. None of this has anything to do with me. Thanks for nothing, Todrick. Okay, Todrick was bloody useful. Not. Let's give uh, Elephant Face a call, shall we? Bonjour, Kula. Oh, hi. It's George Stobart. The American at the cafe? Ah, oui. Uh, you said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown. And I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Look, why don't you come here to my apartment? Fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, I'll come right over. As I said, she's not as ugly as she looks. Um, so, yeah, let's go and see her, shall we? Okay, so her address was 365 Rougerie, so here we go. I pushed against the door, but it seemed to be locked. Okay, right. So, we are now outside Nico's ap apartment. We need to get access. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end part two here. And in part three, we're going to find uh, how, how to get into Nico's apartment and see what information she's got for us. 
Thank you very much for watching.